Praise his Lord. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory has God. Yeah, beautiful King Father. I will say thank you, Jesus. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Yeah, Lord. worthy to be praised, oh Lord. Amen. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. My Redeemer, you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. Ashen of this, you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. My Redeemer, you are worthy to be praised. A child of this, as old as you are, as old as you are, you will never change. A child of this, a child of this, as old as you are. As old as you are, you will never change a shadow of this, a shadow of this, as old as you are, as you are, Lord. as old as you are, we worship you, Jesus. You will never change a shade of this, a shade of this, as old as you are, as old as you are, as you, are. you will never change. What manner of man is Jesus? Hallelujah. Oh, yes. What manner of man is Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He make the lamb to walk. Hallelujah. He make the blind to see. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Father, we worship you this morning. We say you are great, you are kind, you are wonderful to us. Father, Lord, we worship you. We give you all the glory. You are the ancient of this. You are the I am that I am. Lord, we say thank you, Jesus. There's not like you, Lord. You are unquestionable, God. You are the great I am. Father, we say thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we worship you. Father, we give you glory. We say thank you, Jesus. Father, we worship you. We say thank you, Lord. We worship you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Father, be thy exalted in Jesus. Father, Father, we say thank you, Jesus. Bigger than 
Thank you, Jesus. Just like the topic we'll be discussing this morning, this song came to my mind when I saw the topic. And I want us to take it um, together. Bigger than all my problems. Bigger than and my fears. God is bigger than any mountains that I can or cannot see. Bigger than all my questions, oh, bigger than anything. God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Bigger than all my problems, oh, bigger than anything. God is bigger than every mountain, every mountain that I can or cannot see. Bigger than all my questions, oh, bigger than anything. God is bigger than every mountain. That I cannot, cannot see. Father, we thank you because you're bigger than anything we might be facing. Oh Lord, we worship you, we give you hope. Yes, yes, yes. Bigger than everything. We worship you, Father. We thank you for who you are. You're bigger than all our problems. You're bigger than everything that we face. You're bigger than any mountain. Any storms in life that we face is bigger than God. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity once again to gather on today. Father, we exalt your name. Give you all the glory. Let your name be exalted. Let your name be magnified in Jesus. But I thank you who you are. In Jesus' mighty name we worship. Amen. Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you for who you are in our life. Thank we you. thank you for your grace, for your salvation, for your for your love thank in Christ you. Jesus, thank for you. making it another day. It thank is out of your the abundance of your love, not who we are that you've thank made you. us see this day. It is out of your faithfulness and righteousness. We exalt your name. We we'll give you all the glory, Father, for who you are. Let your kingdom come, Father. Let your will on earth, the way is done in heaven. That you are gathered on to thee today, Father. Come and cleanse us of all the iniquities and the rebellion in our heart that has not continued to make us grow in you. Help us to receive your word and let his word, let it germinate and bear fruit. Fruit of repentance, fruit of the spirit for us to be able to reveal your goodness in our life. Let your will be done. Help us to be doers of this word. Not just continue to, to come and take attendance, but to be really fully immersed in your love, in your grace, in Jesus' name. Thank you for who you are. In amen. Jesus' mighty name, we worship. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you very much. Uh, once again, we thank God for the opportunity to guide our own to God today. We thank you. Uh, thank you, Sister Comfort and Pastor. Uh, I'm very delighted to be, to be here this morning. And um, yesterday, we started the topic, you know, uh, about overcoming our insecurity and there's a trend to everything that we've been talking about it may maybe in our worship um, in, in, in our Sunday service but the encouragement and the equipment God is always trying to give us for us to, for us to be able to be to build that faith to be able to you know to look onto him for our eternal hope not to continue to strive or you know continue to live in you know, be a life of insecurity. God has always, you know, when we think about our fellowship together, it is based, he is always encouraging us, equipping us. And for us to be able to, to lean on that truth, to know that, that it is not based on what we do or what we've achieved or what we know. It is by his equipment. Yes. yes. That's yeah. what, that we are here. And yesterday, you know, when yesterday, you know, even in the verse that we read yesterday, you know, alone is, is inspirational for us to be able to look onto him every time we are in one kind of depression oh. in our life. For us to look at it deeply and see that 
it is not based on, you know, our current struggles, but it is based on person that uh, uh, is based on God that that is faithful, that his word that his words are true. And the manifestation of these words have been revealed every day in our life because, like we said, it is by his grace that we have woken up today. So when you think about it, manifestation of his love, that that everything he wants for us is good. So for us today, again, we're going to continue that same thing on overcoming our security, yeah, part two of it. And our Bible reading is taken from 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. Yeah, verse nine. So I, I just want to quickly get at it because uh, I was going to read a lot of scriptures just to be able to you know, give us context of this thing. So Second Corinthians um, chapter nine. I just want to quickly read through it from uh, verse one. It said, "So to give us context about uh, who equips us, who qualifies us, who gives us." You know, instead of us to continue to live in worries about what we have or we don't have or, or being insecure, because when you think about insecurity, it's because there's something lacking. We're thinking, you know, and we are so ashamed to be able to reveal our weaknesses, even though it's God that he said it is in our weakness, just like what we were, we heard on Sunday. It is God that equips us in, in our weakness. His power is made manifest to showcase that he is the one equipping us, not our, for us. And for us to accept this truth, it is even... It is even salvation itself to accept the truth that yes. it's not based. Yes. It saves yes. us. It saves us from all those burdens. Are all that ah, I have to do this. I have to. Mm. But we know that it is not us that is doing it in the first place. So that one is alone. It's it's salvation because now we are, we don't have to actually continue to drag that burdens all over our life. You see, I really don't. I really don't. I'm reading a New Living Translation. I really don't need to write to you about the min, this ministry of giving for the believers in Jerusalem. For I know how eager you are to help. And I have been boasting to churches in Macedonia that you in, you in grace were ready to send an offering a year ago. In fact, it was your enthusiasm that stirred up many of the Macedonian believers to begin giving. Hallelujah. Wow. But I am sending these brothers to you. I'm sending these brothers to you to be sure you really are ready, as I have been telling them and I, that your money is all collected. I don't want to be wrong in my boasting about you. We will be embarrassed not to mention your embarrassment if some Macedonian believers came with me and found that you weren't ready after all I had told them. So I thought I should send these brothers ahead of me to make sure the gift you promise is ready, but I want it to be a willing gift, not one giving grudgingly. Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop. But the one who plants generously will be will get a generous crop. You must decide. You must each decide in your heart how much to give, and and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves a cheerful a person who gives cheerfully, and God will generous, generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left to share with others. Amen. So that is. That is our scripture for today, verse 8. But when you think about the follow-up to it, so for us, we are, no matter, you know, most of the time we are insecure because we, we, we are not willing to, to do something or to take a leap of faith because we think we are not equipped, mm. that we don't have enough. We don't have enough. We don't, but in verse, he's telling us that it is God himself that even equips us so that we can be, to, to, to be able to equip other people. So it's not based on what we have. It is God himself. So our insecurity of, ah, I, I, I don't have enough money. So how would I be able to donate this? How will I be able to donate this? What I have, it is God that is giving me. And it's him, it's him that is going to give me more. After the, the, the analogy of a farmer who plants a few seeds, because it's God, and we are going to see in this following verse, the follow-up that it is God that even equips us with that seed to yes. be able to have more generously. So yes. whatever our security is, God is the one making provisions for us in the first place. So and verse 8, again, let me read it. It says, and God will generously provide all you need. So yes. even if, as you are given, he is the one making the provision for the seed. So, and he will be the one to make your seed grow 
enormous. He said, and he will provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left mm. out of what we have. So you, you might be thinking, I don't have enough. I'm not secured. I'm not, I'm not good enough for this job. But it is him that is equipping you with the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And enough, enough left. You see, and everything you need, plenty left to share with others. And I continue verse, verse 9. I say, as the scriptures say, they, sh- they share freely and give generously to the poor. Their good deeds will, rem- will be remembered forever. For God is the one who provides the seed for the farmer and the bread to eat. In the same way, it will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. So for us, instead of us to feel insecure about not having enough, or not being equipped, or not having this or that, or you know, or whatever trials we're going through. Currently, he is the one that provides for us to be able to overcome the present challenges and to have enough in the tank to be able to bless others. Yeah. He said, "Yes, you will be enriched in every way, so that you can always be generous. And when we take your gifts to those who need them, they will thank God." on behalf of you <laughs> so so two so, so good things will result from the ministry of giving the needs yes. of the believers in jerusalem yes. will be met and they will joyfully express their thanks to god they will be their needs will be met and now they will now glorify god so you've actually served two purposes not mm. by living in security mm. but by believing and having faith that it is god himself that is equipping you to be able to do these mm. good works mm. as a result of your ministry they will give glory to god Mm. for your generosity to them and to all believers mm. and and to all believers will prove that you are obedient to the good news of christ okay. and they will pray for you with deep affection because of the overflowing grace of god has given you thank god for this gift to one too wonderful for words this mm. gift because this revelation of this truth here is telling us that in the first place we are not the one that is that you know, it's God that provides us the seed mm. that we are going to use to bless other people. So for us not to feel insecure, like, ah, I'm not, I'm not equipped enough. I'm not, I don't have this enough. I don't have that enough. It is God himself in us that has told us that even what we have, the life that we have, the voice that we have, the, 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 the whatever we have, it is good enough for us to be able to use because he is the one that is in, equipping us. Okay, I cannot speak I cannot speak well. Uh, I'm like Moses. I stammer. But I am, he is the one equipping you. And now the equipment that he has given Moses to be able to equip other people. Now Moses have enough in his, he has enough in his tank because now he's more confident. You know, every time there's a, a lot of, a lot of conspiracy or rebellion in the camp, he seeks the Lord because now it is out of the abundance of what God has given him. Like I am your equipment. So mm. come to me. Mm. So from there, he is now able to equip other ones and tell them that this is what God is telling us to do this particular time. He's not now every time now that every of those same thing happens, not equipped because he knows that he is not based on what he does, it is based on who is equipping him to do that particular work that he was that is put to him. So for us, it is very important that we know that it is true. God that we keep, and we we also in this particular chapter, uh, verse John fifteen, we always read it. And verse four, I just want to quickly read verse four and five only. He said, "Remain in me, and I will remain in you. For it, is, for a branch cannot produce fruit if it's severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me." Yes, I am the vine. So, he is our equipment. And we, so for us, any insecurity we're facing right now, we should know that it is in that is going to give us the strength and the equipment, the qualification to be able to overcome that present challenge. And those who remain in me and I in them, and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you cannot do nothing. So for us to, to, to not continue to feel, you know, you know, insecure by thinking, okay, I cannot do this. But if I cannot do it, that, there's somebody that can do it, right? The person that can do it is divine. Hallelujah. And I have to remain in him 
for me to be able. So for us, anytime we face this challenge, it is an avenue for us to, you know, abide more in him, know him more, and he will be equipped enough to do what he has called us to do, which is to not to live in fear, but to continue to go ahead, not live in worry, but to reveal his goodness. Because there's always an avenue for us to be able to express who he is and his love by going through all these things. So overcoming our stress or insecurity of the present time, like, ah, man, I cannot do this. I cannot do that. But there's somebody that can do it, mm-hmm. right? And the person that can do it is our God. And he's mm-hmm. telling us, he's mm-hmm. come to him. Mm-hmm. And he is the one that qualifies us in the first place to be able to achieve all these things. Mm-hmm. It's, and, I, and I want to read the devotion today. He said, if you, or your sense of well-being comes from any source other than God, including yourself, chances are uh, you will always struggle with insecurity because for real, that is, that is what's going to happen. And that's why Paul wrote that God can pour on the, pour on the blessings in astonish, astonishing ways. So you are ready for anything and everything, more than, more than ready to do what needs to be done. Another translation puts it this way. God is able to bless you abundantly. So that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Mm-hmm. So he is the one that equips us for that work in the first place. So for us, it is to depend on him, not to look onto ourselves or look onto any other source. Because in the first place, we're looking onto ourselves and looking onto that source. That is why we are, on, we, are not, we are not secured in the first place. That is why we have insecurity. Because when we look at ourselves, we see that we are not equipped enough. You know, when we look at other sources, we're like, ah, man, this thing cannot help me. I cannot pass this exam. Mm. I cannot do this. I cannot speak in front of the crowd. Mm. I cannot do this. I cannot excel at work. Mm. So if we look onto ourselves, we will see failure. But if we look onto the creator of the world, the almighty God, we will see victory. Hallelujah. You see, as long as you are trusting in yourself and or others, you will struggle with uncertainty and self-doubt. But once you start trusting in God, what he can do in you, with you, through you, and for you, you begin to feel differently about yourself. Mm-hmm. Insecurity destroys your self-esteem by mm-hmm. making you feel unqualified and undeserving. Mm-hmm. And here is the worst part. Often, it means you can't be taught, can accept honest criticism, mm-hmm. and therefore, you can't grow. The thing you need most, good impute, becomes the last thing you, you're willing to accept because you are free to let anyone know you are less than perfect. Mm. And God is calling us to come open with, a, with all the burdens. He cast all your burdens onto me. All the things that's making you feel ill-equipped. Be open to somebody that is willing to help you, which is our God. He's telling us to seek him in that phase of that issues that we feel. Or the uncertainty and insecurity, like, be open. God, I cannot do this. You know, like Moses did. He sought the Lord and he told him, like, can you show me that you're going to go with me? I cannot do this by myself. And God is saying, I will go with you. I'm your equipment. I will equip you. He said, consequently, you will find you. Consequently, you find it hard to confront challenges and seize the opportunities that come your way. Deep down, you feel incompetent, unaccepted, disapproved, or rejected. And rejected. In short, insecurity is an inside job. Mm. With that in mind, Take an honest look at your life right now. Go ahead. It is safe. No one else is looking. The only person who will benefit from this is you. Then then turn to God and say, Lord, everything I need to succeed in life, I have in you. Knowing this truth, like you said, that insecurity that we have in ourselves, it's an inside job. It's our mind playing tricks on us. Because now we have been revealed the truth that God is the real equipment that we need to be able to go ahead and do whatever we what, do what we are called to do in that scripture that was read to us yesterday in our second corinthians i want to quickly read verse four through six again say we are confident and all confident of all this because our great trust in god because of our great trust in god through christ we are confident because our confidence is based on our faith in God, through Christ Jesus, that is the one that qualifies us. And in verse 5 says, it is not that we, are, we think we are qualified to do anything on our own. Our qualification comes from God. He is the one that 
makes us qualify. He has enabled us to be ministers of his new covenant. This is not a covenant of written laws, but of the spirit. The old written covenant ends in death, but, the, but under the new covenant, the spirit gives life. So for us, it is not that we know that we can do this. Even though our mind is telling us, ah, we cannot do it, but we know who can do it. And it's by faith that we have in Christ Jesus that this, that God qualifies us. So we are equipped and even made righteous through faith in Christ Jesus. And also, I just want to quickly read Romans verse 3. And I read from 21. You see, but now God has shown us a way to be made right with him without keeping the requirements of the law as was promised in the writings of Moses and the prophets long ago. We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for anyone who believes, no matter who, who we are. For everyone has seen and we have all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet in his grace, he freely makes us right in, in his sight. It is true, Christ Jesus, when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. For God presented Jesus as a sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. The sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in times. For he was looking ahead and including them in what he will do in his present time. God did not did is to demonstrate this righteousness for he himself is fair and just and he makes sinners right in his sight when they believe in Jesus. So we, so can we boast then that we have done anything to be accepted by God? No, because our quitter is not based on obeying the law. It is based on faith. So we are made right with God through faith, not by obeying the law. So for us, our equip, equipment is based on who God is not based on whatever we can do. We, we already know we cannot do anything without him. Like he has expressed to us in John 15, verse 4 through 5, that it is in that equips us to even be who we are called to be in the first place. So no matter, even though right now we're feeling like I'm not equipped enough, I am not, uh, I am not, uh, as in, I don't feel, you know, I'm not, to me, I'm not a good Christian. I still mm -hmm. fall short when we, I'm insecure in my salvation. Mm. But God is telling us that it is not based on what we do. It is mm. by our faith mm. in what Christ has already done on the cross of Calvary. It is us believing that Christ died for us and he has resurrected to give us life. So it's not based on what I am I'm very holy. I am morally good. That will, in fact, even put us into more bondage than we can ever think of. But it is our faith that Christ has done the work. So for us, our equipment, our righteousness, it is not based on the works that we perform, but it is us believing that God is able and is willing, and he has even done it. He has even conquered these whatever fears that we hold. But it is us, again, to believe this truth, accept this truth, and to continue to live it out through the revelation of the Holy Spirit and the equipment of the Holy Spirit. So our equipment, our qualification, it is by faith knowing that it's not by might, not by power, but by the Holy Spirit. And I hope God will continue to encourage us as he has done this morning to help us to overcome any forms of insecurity spiritually, mentally, physically, academically, financially, any insecurity that we have, that it is in. We first started from the generosity that God has imputed to us that because he is the one that gives us strength to be even be able to be generous to others in the same way, in the same vein, glorifying it as we are, as we are being generous with our services, with our actions, talk, thoughts, and deeds. And I hope God will help us. Thank you. Uh, let's have contributions this one. Mm. Mm. Wow. wow, this is deep, Ryo. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is deep. It is deep. It is deep. Thank you very much. Thank you for all, everybody listening. And I'm sure there is a lot of contributor this morning that we add to all this, um, all this thing. And you know, every one of us, one way or the other, we have a battle of insecurity. And um, it all comes from 
that word, that statement that you made, we keep looking at ourselves because with us, we are limited. Uh, but looking at God, looking at the author of our faith, in whom we believe, in whom we know um, to be the one that created the universe by the spoken word and those things come into establishment. When we look at him and we truly believe in him and we really know him, we will not start seeing ourselves in anything that we do. We will start looking up to him. Rasam said that yesterday, that when we start looking at our ability, we have a short shortage of everything that God planned to do. We actually put ourselves in place of what God wants to do, and we struggle with the will of God. And most of the time, that's what's happening with us, and that's what brings insecurity. How do we address that part? That is the question. Like the writer said, take a look at yourself. Look at yourself now. Look at where you are. No, nobody's looking at you. Pastor is not looking at you. Your husband is not looking at you. Your wife is not looking at you. Your children are not looking at you. Look at yourself and be honest with yourself. Do you really, really believe that Jesus died for you? Or is just a mouthpiece that comes through your mouth? Do you really believe? Do you really believe? As I was meditating on this right up today, God was telling me that most of the time when we go through challenge, we don't recognize God anymore. We think God has done evil to us. We think God has done bad to us. Somebody sent me a text one time. He said, do, do God really allow people to suffer? And I, I was tempted to say, are you a Christian or are you just asking this question from anything? Does God really allow people to suffer? And where that is where we find our security and insecurity in the means of troubling, in the means of turbulence. When the turbulence take place, if we don't have security in God, we will be swept away with the wind. We will be swept away with the storm. But when we are in him, when we know our success is in him, he is the one that we rely on. He's the one that we trust in. Nothing can come and take us away from his presence. Look at the life of Job. Every situation, every turbulence, every situation in our life is a test of who we rely on. And if we rely on self, definitely that storm will blow us into isolation. That storm will blow us into the hand of the enemy. That storm will blow us into doubting God. And once we doubt God, it's all over. The purpose of Satan going to afflict Job, what was the reason for Job to doubt God, that God is not in existence? That was his purpose. So whatever you may be going through right now, I just want to take a minute for you to look at yourself and don't see yourself. See God in you because he that's in you is bigger than that problem. Because when you see yourself, you have limitation. You cannot, you're not qualified for that job. You don't have the education for that job. You don't have the material for that job. You don't even have a husband to say you want to conceive a child. You don't even have a wife for you to make a baby. You don't even qualify to that place to say, oh, people look at me and they don't think that I look beautiful or I look handsome. I don't have what, is, what it takes to be who I should be. You want, that's looking at you. But when you look at God, you see that is the way maker. You see that he is the mountain mover. You see that he is the one that said, let there be light and there is light. You see him that is the one that said, let there be division between the waters so there can be a way for my children. You see him as the one that removed the mountain out of the way so that the children of Israel can pass through, that the war of Jericho fell because he was with them. You will see God in all situations. Like Job said, will I accept good things from him and not able to accept bad, bad things from him? Every test you're going through right now, it is to tell you a test of your faith. Who are you looking up to? If you're looking up to yourself, there is no we know. But when you're looking unto God, because it is God, the one that has the sufficiency, that when he says, so it is, and your trust is in him, so will that thing comes to pass like 
a story and it become history in your life. It become a testimony. Job went through it. Joseph went through it. And they came out stronger at the end of it. Are you going through that problem alone? Look at yourself. And if you see yourself going through it alone, what you need to do, what Brian just quoted, John 15, verse 3, and read it down. You cannot do it by yourself. You must go back, put your branches back on the vine, and let the vine feed you. You don't have the resources to overcome the battle ahead of you. You don't have the ability to win the fight. But when you submit to him, when you surrender to him, then he can equip you. Because he's the one that never loses but you. He's the one that when they say, let there be light, there is light. He's the one that says, mountain, move out of the way, that the mountain obey him. He's the one that speaks to the storm, to say, peace be still, and the storm still. He's the one that never sleep or slumber. Go back into him. Let him take over your life and don't see yourself, but see God in you. That insecurity will be wiped out. And God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't have that much because I, 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 you, Brian, you covered everything. And I, I believe that God is, uh, is uh, spoken through him. Uh, it, it's just a wonderful thing to, to know that God, uh, yesterday, if you were, you, are, you were here yesterday, go listen to yesterday, that insecurity on yesterday and today. This is a powerful message. Please share it with people. Many people are in the bondage today. We read on our workers' meeting in the call the, the, by, by Rick Jonah that many people are in bondage because the people that they are resulting to, that they are going to, crying to, they are not pointing them to the one that can take them out of the prison. They said they are the one that actually contributing to their lockup. So who are you confining into? The only person you can confine into is God. Be honest with yourself. Search your salvation. Who do you trust? Is it in your education? Is it in the material that you're getting? Is it in the, your own ability? If that's what you're trusting on, they will wash away. They will be beaten down because there's something big. Somebody has bigger one than you. But when you change your perspective, your mindset that God is my security, then your mind will change that you will not see trouble. Instead of the trouble, you see God working miracle. Instead of the problem, you see God in his, in his function. So don't put yourself in the prison of what the devil has bring your way. And God will help us to see clearly. Share that message of yesterday. Share it of today. It's on the YouTube. It's on the WhatsApp. It, it's on the, on the YouTube, on the Facebook. It's on the, on the podcast. Please share it. Get people out of the bondage of their mind that they cannot. When God say, you can do all things, through Christ, who strengthen you, not through your education, not through your power, not through your own idea, not through your own income, but through Christ. If Christ is not strengthening you, you have no strength. So God will help us to rely on him so that we can obtain victory for the, for the race ahead of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Pastor. Thank you, like, uh, like Israeli said, focusing on ourselves. You know, you, you even give two scenarios. Sometimes we focus on ourselves and we realize that we are not capable of doing things. And the second one is we'll focus on the wrong thing. And one of the things when you think about a call to, to have God as, as, you know, to not worship any other God, it is to look onto him only, not to look onto other things. Because when we're looking onto other things, that means we're depending on other things. Then we sometimes will put ourselves in the place of God by looking onto ourselves. And that's when we find, that's, that is when we go into that depression because we find that we don't even have answers to this solution. But there is somebody that, there's something, you know, our God has answers to all these things. So for us to look onto him, not looking onto anything else for, for, for solutions, and we will find our security. Multiple verses in the Bible that God has told them that he is their security. You know, today uh, I was going through the final part of uh, uh, Numbers. I mean, if Numbers, uh, Numbers uh, 21. In the final portion of that Numbers 20, when they were having issues on their way, and uh, verse, in verse 33 from Numbers 21, it said, then they turned a match up to the road of Bashan, but King Og of Bashan and all his people attacked them at Ether. But the Lord said to Moses, do not be afraid of him, 
for I have handed him over to you along with all his people and his land. Do the same as you did to king of Sion and the Amorites who ruled in Eshbon. And he said, and Israel killed king Og, his sons and all his subjects. Not a single survivor remained. Then Israel occupied their land. So in the first place, we say God is encouraging and it's like, don't be afraid. I, you know, I am the one that is equipping you to do this battle. So for us, you know, we are not equipped by ourselves. We are equipped by God. So for us to look onto him, so it's very important that we, you know, seek him instead of seeking ourselves. And because like I said, if we, as Pastor has said, if we continue to look onto ourselves, we will find that we are not capable and not qualified. Thank you, sir. More contributions, please. Let's have more contributions, please. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know it's, uh, amen, it's, amen, amen. we've been doing it since yesterday, but I think we could still have one or two more people just you know, encourage each other. We have a lot of people on the line today. People can share testimony, you know. Um, in the past, uh, yeah, Sister Bridget, are you, are you saying something? Somebody was saying something, sorry. In the past, I, I used to feel like um, I, I had... Glory to God. Good morning. Bridget. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, I, you people have finished everything now. <laughs> But I started, you have uh, breaking everything down, and a uh, and, uh, pastor came again and uh, bombarded the whole thing. So <laughs> we, we, we are blessed, I'm blessed. It's really not, it, it will just be mere repetition, you know. So we are really blessed. I believe everybody is blessed. I believe those online, they have, uh, you know, uh, uh, they should receive the message, you know. Because, uh, you know, Pastor was saying just now that, you know, if you, you are relying on people, you are relying on yourself, you know, Christ is, is your sufficiency and you need to, to get closer to God, to Christ and, and develop intimate relationship with him through the Holy Spirit. And, uh, you know, he will continue to help us. All that we need, everything is in him. But we, we, we don't have anything. John the Baptist says, he said, I will decrease, he will increase. He said, no, you know, whatever you receive is, is you no more receive anything except you receive it from above. Mm. So, you know, everything that we need, our equipment, everything comes from God. Mm. So we really just as people, you know, your brother, you and the pastor have already emphasized that we need to depend on him. We need to cease from worry. The only way we can cease from worry is as we depend on God. Depend on the Holy Spirit, you know, whatever the situation, you know. And have we, you know, there is this song that say, we are completing him. There is nothing else we can do, but Jesus has did it all. The fullness of God dwelleth in him, body. So there is, it's not by works of righteousness. Oh, everything Christ has accomplished, accomplished, accomplished for us. So, there is nothing any man can do. Jesus has done it all. Oh, so, you know, we are complete in him. Yes. We must have that mindset that we are complete in him. We are justified. Hallelujah. Justification is not for a perfect man. Mm. Justification is for an imperfect man. Mm. Work in progress. Mm. So we must look at it that we are not sufficient in our sight. Christ is everything. You know, that is why I, I find it very uncomfortable when people try to advertise and say, you know, as though God has done this, you know, I'm this, it's here that is happily, it's here, you know, all those kind of things. I told me they are just childish behavior because the Lord is the one, the fullness of God dwelleth in Christ. All things are in him, for him, and by him. We are complete in him. So there's no self, there's no room for self uh, condemnation. There's no room for self, uh, you know, whatever, because the Lord Jesus has justified us. All that we need are in him. When we have that mindset, 
as we approach to him that, you know, he's our helper, you know, so that the Lord is only walking through us. He said, if you love me, my father and I will come and make an hour out bold with you and I will manifest myself through you. Mm -hmm. So whatever he, he manifests is a true, whatever anything we do, he, he does it through us. He is the one that blesses us. And that blessing with which he blesses us is for us to give it to other people, to also bless other people with what he has blessed us with. Mm -hmm. So we don't owe anything. Everything belongs to God. His blessing and all it belongs to him. So that is my little contribution. Thank you. We're already exhausted everything. God bless you, Brian. Thank you so much for that uh, thank you. administration. We thank God. Thank you. Thank you. God thank bless you. you. Thank you. Yeah. We thank God. Thank you very much, Brian. Yeah. Yeah. We are, you know, our sufficiency comes from who God is, not from ourselves. And it's it can be, you know, you know. We can exhaust saying it to ourselves because at least it, it is based on those confessions that we are strengthened and know that we cannot continue to live based on our own thinking. Um, you know, I, go, I, hope, I hope the Holy Spirit is you know really ministering to us because even the fact that I'm the one saying it, it might sound good, the fact that I'm saying it, but you know, it's an encouragement through that confession that. You know, we should not continue to live based on our security. But some, somebody, you know, I can say very openly that, you know, I deal with a lot of insecurity, you know, like, oh, I can't do this. You know, there was one particular, like, I think, like, a couple of weeks back now, and I was trying to actually solve one particular issue, you know. And I was in one particular online course that I was doing, and I kept... You know, this particular question kept, you know, I kept, you know, not getting the answers that I wanted, desired results, you know. So I, you know, kept worrying o over a period of time. I just told myself, okay, you know, it's God that gives knowledge, wisdom, understanding, okay. And he's going to direct me. And I just left it. <laughs> I didn't even deal with it again. I was like, man, I'm done with this. I just left it. So one particular day I was going to play basketball with a friend of mine. You know, which is all he also is an engineer. And I know probably he has a you know, something you told me, just take my computer along, then we would discuss it when we get there after playing basketball. And we played and we discussed it. When we first started, it became the same kind of challenge. And I explained to him the processes because I broke it down and I did one and I got the right result. But the other one I couldn't just impute it together. Over a while, we just I and mean, eventually it was revealed to us and you know. So for us, it is not based on what I know or what I don't know. It is him that is equipping us to be able to do all those things. And it was him that told me, okay, just take it along. And and when it became clear, I was stunned. You know, that's, you know, I, as a result came out. So what I'm saying now is, it is God himself that does this things. You know, the revelation day was not based on what I knew. It was him that is even giving me the knowledge of you know, and understanding to be able to do whatever I want to do. So instead of me, you know, that's supposed to be a testimony that drives me forward to seek him for directions and purpose, not to continue to just struggle and think, oh, I can't do this. I can't do all oh, I can do it by myself. So it's not by power in my mind, but by, oh, it's by the God's leading, by his Holy Spirit. Thank you very much. If we don't have any other contributions, I'll hand over to the pastor. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Brian. Um, thank you, everybody that joined this morning. I think that we just need to, to look at ourselves and see if truly the way we've been relating with God, have we been relating with God, injecting our flesh and our activity with him and not allowing the Holy Spirit to take full control of our action. If we have been doing that, let's pray that God kill this flesh that's been showing himself. The flesh show itself. That's where Christ is nowhere to be found. But when the flesh is suppressed, the spirit of God build confidence to look unto God. When we start seeing ourselves, that means we are still operating in the flesh because God said he created us for himself, for him to use us for himself, not for ourselves. So every time we continually to see ourselves, we will continue to see the limitation of who we are 
the incap incapability of who we are. And but when we start allowing the Holy Spirit to function through us, Holy Spirit will be pointing us to the cross. That yes, what you think you cannot do, Christ has done it. Look unto him. He will direct our path. Because the Bible says, I trust in the Lord. Lead not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him. Then he can direct your path. That is the word of God. And that is the foundation of a solid, secured life in Christ. When you throw yourself out and you replace yourself with God, then you can actually have a leading of the Holy Spirit to guide you through every faces of every facet of life. Then you will not have any issue in anything at all. When God's when the Satan was walking around and it was who said Satan say, listen, if Satan can talk to God, why are you looking at yourself? Why not looking at God? Because if Satan can meet with God, and God was asking Satan, have you seen my servant Job? So his, Satan can have communication with God, and you are not communicating with God. Don't you think that you are limiting yourself, your ability to control the situation? Brethren, if we are not being close to God and delight, like the Bible said, that delight in the Lord, and then he can work things out for you, we will continue to struggle in our own self. We need to let go. Say, so don't even think about trusting yourself because yourself already doesn't have the qualification to pass anything. That's why Christ came. And that's why Christ died. That's why he paid the price for, his, for, for my life, for your life, for his life. So that we can regain the Holy Spirit. For Holy Spirit to start leading us in everything that we do. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you won't have the Holy Spirit to guide you. You're on your own. And when you're on your own, there will be a failure upon failure, and you never have enough. And you continue to ask to say, oh, what you did is not sufficient. What you did is not enough because you only see what you do. But when you see Christ, when you accept him into your heart, tell him, come into my life. I want to have a different lifestyle. I want you to be my guide. I want you to be the one directing my life. Tell him, Jesus, I'm a sinner. Come into my life. Confess him that, Jesus, you're the Lord over my life. I give my heart unto you. Take over my life, and I confess you from today onward, the Lord over my life. Then you can start getting the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So you can have a life that is secure. That life will be secure here. It will be secure in heaven, and it will be secure in this end forever. You don't want to live a life that only show insecurity here, then lost the security in heaven. You don't want that. So if you say that prayer that Jesus, you're the Lord over my life, you can look for a Bible, the living church close to you. Tell them you just became born again and they will walk with you in this journey of life. And if you can't find anything, find, go to rccg.org. You will find the redeemed Christian church of God close to you. Tell the pastor you just became born again and you want to start walking according to the to the will of God and God, they will work with you. For the rest of us, let's look at that last statement in this write up today. That let's look critically in our heart. Let's look, take time out, look at yourself. It is safe to look at yourself and see where God sits. Is that problem bigger than God in your heart? Is that situation bigger than God in your heart? Is that circumstances? bigger than God in your heart. If that is the case, change that perspective and start making God bigger than all those problems. When you start making God bigger than those problems, then you will start seeing God walking those problems out. And I pray that God, we are, it will continue to help us all in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you once again. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you adoration for always ministering to us, always telling us, that you are the only one we can trust in. You say we should abide in you. And when we abide in you, we can do all things. Uh, a, 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 a branch cannot survive without staying in the vine. When the branch fall out of the vine, it weeded. 
Father, we don't want to fall out of your hand. Continue to hold us with your right hand of righteousness. In our way, we are trusting you in every circumstances. Some of us are still struggling with little things here and there. Father, we know that this flesh must die. Help us to not look at ourselves. Help us to continue to see you in all circumstances because then you can come into them and come and make ways out of no way and come and create solution to all the problems. Lord, help us to focus on you in the mighty name of Jesus. The rest of the day is in your hand. When we meet again tonight for the Bible study, we seek committed into your hand. Holy Spirit, don't leave us. Lead us not into temptation today. Deliver us from evil today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Give us our daily bread today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we cover every one of that are out there, those that are still going out, those that will be going out with the blood of Jesus, especially our children that are out there. We cover them with the blood of Jesus. No weapon formed against them shall prosper. All of our people that are out there, we cover them with the blood of Jesus. This pandemic that's going on out there, none of this plague will come close to our dwelling because we are dwelling in your sacred place and we are protected under your shadow in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. When we shall meet again, Father, let us see you and let only your name be glorified in our gathering. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen, amen, amen. Let us share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. I am the one the Lord has blessed. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Brio. Thank you, everybody. God bless you. Cover you with the blood of Jesus. May the Lord shine his face upon you. Be gracious to you and grant you peace. Shine his light upon you and grant you peace all around in Jesus' name. God bless you. Have a wonderful Amen. day. See you tonight. Bible study at 7.30. God bless you. Thank you.